Do you have questions from board members? I don't really have a question as much as I want to thank you very much for everything you're doing because this is where it all starts. And like you said, 20% of our children are ready to learn when they enter school. So obviously the emphasis has to be on parental education and um, what have you. And, I, and thank you for this, these statistics. This, uh, for those of you, just, to, just, just very briefly, if you don't, you don't have it there, uh, third grade reading level readiness throughout 93901 is 36%, 93905, 22%, 93906, is 30 percent, uh, Prunedale's 28 percent, uh, Corraldi Terrace 76 percent, and Spreckles is 57 percent. We've got a lot of work to do. Yes, I just need some extra copies in the back. There were a lot of people here earlier, so hopefully there's some there if folks want them, and if not, they can surely reach out to us at Verse 5, and I'll be glad to get anything to anybody else. Thank you. Board members, any questions? I don't hear any, so. Thank you very much for being here and being patient with us. Thank you. We're going to get into Healthy Kids Club at Lincoln. I'm going to invite the site principal from the future. What happened to your school site? I think something went on. Oh. So, once again, Dr. Lisa, members of the Board of Education, community members. Dr. Lisa asked me to come and to introduce to you tonight some parents and others at our school who are hoping to make a real difference and are helping our school to advance in a positive way. Our Healthy Kids Club is part of our parent-teacher organization, and the parents who have come to, uh, to represent them and talk about it work with many parents at our school to make our school really successful. So it's my privilege tonight to introduce Maria Giannini, and also helping here this evening, um, Eric Brennan, his wife, Anna, and their son, Paolo Kai, who will be talking to us about some of the things that our Healthy Kids Club is doing and some of the things we're trying to reinforce and help our students to learn at Lincoln School. Ms. Cheney. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dillinger, and uh, good evening, Dr. Lusa and board members. Thank you so much for having us this evening and everybody that's here. Um, so, as Mr. Dillinger said, we, we have our Healthy Kids Club at Lincoln that um, we started. I'm sure I'm doing this correctly. There you go, there's our mission. Um, our main mission is to inspire children to become champions of their healthy eating and physical activity and caring about themselves and the world around them through garden-based learning and environmental and ocean consciousness. So that's a brief overview of where we currently are with our um, garden project, which is one of our main initiatives for Healthy Kids Club. And here to talk more specifically about the garden is a gentleman that's also a father um, at our school who is a um, who has his PhD, I believe, in soil science. Forgive me, Eric, if I bought your bio. Um, and he um, has generously donated hundreds and hundreds of hours um, to our program. And we're so thankful to have him as part of our school community and 
um, an active member of our Healthy Kids Club. Um, please welcome Dr. Eric Brennan. Dr. Brennan, welcome. Yeah. Lights on, please. Oh, thank you. You can just call me here. <laughs> Even though I have a PhD, it doesn't mean I uh, did anything other than stick with something a little bit for a long time. <laughs> so, uh, it's good evening, everybody. It's always a nice opportunity to have a chance to share um, some positive things that are happening in our school district and something that I'm very passionate about, and that is playing with the soil, and playing with plants, and playing with insects. I want to um, acknowledge the person who, from the healthy, or the five, first five, that talked about play. Play is, play is so critical. <laughs> so play, play is so critical, both for children, and actually for adults. If you haven't played today, you probably need to because it can help with making connections. So, what was just passed out there was some vegetables from our, our vegetable garden at Lincoln School, which were harvested this morning. And uh, this is just a small portion of what was harvested from one of these boxes. So, if you look at those boxes there, we have 24 of them. And we're producing yields that are equivalent to, if not greater, than what happens on a commercial scale in the fields that I do research in. So um, just a few, I just want to say a few things about the garden. What we're trying to do with the garden is to help kids make connections between science, math, reading, the environment, food, nutrition, agriculture, and their future. Get them excited about this. That's what learning different languages is about, whether they're Spanish, or chemistry, or biology, or entomology, or soil science. So this is what the garden is about, to try to create this living uh, life lab, really. So we've got these beds that we, uh, we put together. Um, they're based on uh, recycled materials for the most part. So the, the, the base of the bed is made from a recycled fertilizer containers. Those self-contained beds, um, if I can go to the next shot, please. Uh, just in a nutshell, we brought in soil from the outside to minimize issues with lead and things that often come with older schools. Um, and in the bottom, we have a reservoir which can help with uh, sub-irrigation. So you can put water in there and then the water absorbs or wicks up into the bed. We also use drip irrigation in the beds. So in this day and age of water issues in California, we're trying to become very efficient with these systems. Um, and the next shot just shows you a little bit of how we're trying to help the kids make connections. So we don't have a lot of time, but what I want to encourage you to do is go to YouTube, which I'm sure you all enjoy doing because it's fun often, right? <laughs> Play. Um, go to YouTube and look up Lincoln Space HKC, stands for Healthy Kids Club. And what we're doing there is we're creating, um, you can also go there through our blog, uh, creating some educational videos that will be, right now they're in English, but we're, we have a volunteer that's going to translate them into Spanish to try to, uh, in a very efficient way, communicate what we're doing there to parents, teachers, volunteers, and students. So a few of the shots there, the kids are weighing their vegetables. They keep track of all the production. And there's reasons for that. That's how you develop what I call a green thumb. And there's a whole video on how to get a green thumb. Five, I think it's five minutes long. You might enjoy checking that out. Um, after we do that, the kids then eat the food that they've grown. Now, as a scientist, I do believe in data. Data is very important. And one really important piece of data that we have is that Americans don't need, eat near enough vegetables. <coughs> So I expect you all to eat all those vegetables there. <laughs> but why don't kids eat enough vegetables often? It's because they haven't made a connection to growing it. You get kids growing food like this, they'll all eat it because they own it. It's theirs. Um, so we're introducing why keep a journal in there. Um, you know, how, what weight did you produce? How big were the leaves? How many leaves were produced? 
Um, it is a fun activity. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. And I want to thank you all for giving us the opportunity to share, and hopefully this will be something that can help other schools as well. I do want to compliment you because uh, you tested the, uh, the leaves already. They taste pretty good. <laughs> they taste really good with taste of dressing. Uh, so we just highlighted some of our future garden plans. Um, we, we have some really great and lofty plans for our garden. And the very first goal that we had was to create this edible garden. Um, and we did that. And now every single teacher at our school has access to a raised bed where they can, raise, they can grow their own vegetables. We started off with kale, kind of showed them through the process. Um, and I think a lot of the teachers are truly embracing it and enjoying this um, experiment and, and uh, science and math and all of that that comes with it. So we're going to be doing some more of that as well. And then our future garden plans are basically we want to develop an outdoor classroom. We surveyed all of our teachers last year and also at the beginning of this year to kind of see what their goals were and what they'd like to see. The majority want an outdoor classroom space um, and we want to make it state-of-the-art. We also want to make a really state-of-the-art um, outdoor kitchen because we need the space to actually eat our vegetables and prepare our vegetables and have some really cool cooking events and teaching our kids about eating all of this as well. Um, and we want to make it ADA accessible and we've met with um, the district already about it, about making it accessible and we just want to thank you because this project would not be possible without the support of um, the district. So you guys have been incredible in helping us and supporting us and we just thank you so much for all of that support. So um, that's pretty much our garden um, synopsis, but we also have some other initiatives. And the next one that we want to just touch upon really briefly is our Just Run program. And here to speak uh, about it is our school site um, coordinator, Leland Perry. Hi again. Thank you. So yes, I'm Leland Perry. I'm a parent at Lincoln. My, uh, my daughter's in fourth grade there. I'm also their coordinator, so I uh, just want to give a brief history of our Just Run program if you're not familiar with Just Run. Just Run is a, a free program offered to the Big Sur International Organization. I know many of the schools in the Salinas City Elementary School District participate in Just Run. Um, this is our sixth year at Lincoln. Uh, this is our third year as participating during school hours. So the majority of our classes that participate um, do so at least once, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three or more, depending on the, the teacher and their volunteers, uh, usually in the morning. So right after the classroom announcements, the parents who are the volunteer coaches go out with the class and, and the teacher, and they participate in many physical activities. Um, here we have uh, our two million miles. We were recognized last year uh, for the site for celebrating the two million mile run as the organization. So we had a big event for the kids there. Uh, but this is our sixth year and third year of doing it during the school. Um, you know, we had looked at the studies showing if you have increased physical activity early in the morning, it supposedly helps with your test scores. But more importantly, it gets those morning wiggles out. Um, helps the kids focus during the day. So that the teachers have been really excited about that. Um, but it wouldn't be the program that it is if we didn't have the support of the staff uh, that led us into their classrooms, well, outside, uh, bring us into their curriculum. Um, and also the amazing parents that show up early in the morning on full days and get out there with kids. A lot of them aren't even in their um, their own children. I know the class I work with my daughter is not my daughter's class. Um, so without the staff and without those amazing parents that show up all year, uh, this program wouldn't be as successful as it is. Um, we've also had uh, this is going into our third year of participating on with our PTO of running a very successful jogathon, which is a healthy way to fundraise. Uh, everyone knows public schools need money, and the one way that we do that is fundraising. A lot of times it can be achieved through unhealthy ways, selling cookie dough or, or snacks, but we do it by selling miles and selling laps run. Um, last year we were able to raise $7,500, which we were able to put toward the garden and to purchase a hydration station uh, for the classroom, or for the, for the school. Uh, by having this water refilling station, we're helping to decrease the use of plastic. Um, and also to increase water consumption on students. Uh, so that was exciting. Uh, we also win awards. I just learned today we got an uh, email from Big Sur International that our school 
won an award that we will be presented. This is the uh, race two years ago, but after race this year, we'll be presented, uh, our school will be presented with a cash award for having a high participation rate. Um, out of our entire student body, we had over 168 runners register for the race this year. Um, a lot of that was because parents got out there and you know, encouraged other families to sign. So uh, if you ever if you get a chance and you have nothing to do on April 25th, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning in Pacific Grove, we'll be out there, 168 of us with a bus. Uh, we received a $250 grant to help transport some of our students and families that may be um, less inclined to park in Pacific Grove. Maybe we can help transport them there. Um, anyway, we'll be there in full force representing the Salina City uh, Elementary School District. So I encourage everyone to come out and, and run with us. So thank you. And the last initiative that we wanted to talk to you, you all about this evening is our um, Ocean Guardian School grant that we received. It was from uh, the NOAA, um, which is the National, um, thank you, Oceanic, Oceanic thank you, um, Atmospheric Association, there we go. Um, so we were awarded that this year at the beginning of the school year, and basically our initiatives, our main goals are to um, educate our student body about our local watershed, protecting our environment, um, the five R's, so to speak. Um, and we've made a ban on our school campus to reduce, or I shouldn't say ban, we made a pledge to reduce our uh, single-use plastics. So really trying to eliminate the plastic bottles and also plastic bags. Um, we purchased, and also with the help of the district again, we purchased um, uh, reusable water bottles, leak and leopard water bottles, and we just got our last shipment in. We'll probably have to do one more purchase. Every single student will have a leak and leopard's reusable bottle. And um, as Leland mentioned, last year our drugathon funding helped us procure um, in a hydration station, um, that, which will go onto the playground, so kids can bring their water bottles, <coughs> reusable water bottles, out to the playground and use those. We have one in the cafeteria already, um, and then. Just this year with the funding from NOAA, we're uh, purchasing the third one, which will go outside of the staff room. So hopefully um, that will encourage all of our staff and, and parents and everyone who walks in through the front doors of our school, they'll see that hydration station. Um, our goal, long-term goal for that, is to have every single one of our water fountains be transformed into a hydration station. So um, that's long-term. Just today, we did a watershed uh, presentation we had um, a member from Elkhorn Slough come out and work with our fourth through sixth graders, <coughs> teaching them about our uh, local habitat and protecting our ocean. It was a great um, presentation, and the kids actually got to do some activities out in our garden and really learn about how they can protect our environment. Um, we've been doing a lot of things on campus. We're actually on Earth Day. Next week, we're going to be doing a composting and a five R's day. So we're going to be doing recycle, reuse, reduce, uh, rot, and refuse. Um, and we'll be teaching them those five R's on that day and hopefully getting all the teachers and their students out. Um, on March 17th, um, thank you, Jerry Stratton, for coming out that day. Um, we held a eat green, wear green, and I hope hopefully Mr. Dillinger will talk a little bit more about that, but we did an, a school-wide event where every single student had the opportunity to come into our garden and try kale salad. And it was amazing to see how many students asked, asked for three or four helpings. Um, and we had tremendous parental volunteers and great support from our teachers. So it was a really successful event. Um, there's a lot of other stuff I could go on and on about this, but I just wanted to um, kind of share some of the other stuff. Um, our teachers are working on a recycled art project. Um, and it was interesting, I, I don't know if you guys read in uh, the newspaper recently that, you know, I think Carmel Unified School District has, their district-wide has adopted um, basically some of the same things that we're doing here at our school. Um, and you know they've gotten an Ocean Guardian school grant as well, but they got it dist district-wide. And so I'm really proud of what we're doing here. We're the first school in Salinas to ever receive this grant. So that's a really huge thing. Um, so as I said, we have the Recycled Art Project, which will be kind of like bottle cap art, and hopefully we'll be able to display that throughout our campus and in our garden. Um, we did our Eat Green, Wear Green, um, which is our second annual. This was the, our second year of doing that. 
Um, we have a movie night coming up next Friday, which is called Bag It. It's a movie that talks about the harm, the harmful, the harms of using single-use plastic bags and what it does to our ocean and our marine life. And then, um, as I said, we have our Earth Day, the five R's. One other event that I wanted to mention that hopefully you guys can attend is McShane's um, Nursery is holding an Earth Day mixer this Thursday night at 5.30 to 7. And we were selected as the beneficiaries of that event. So people can make nominal donations um, to the Healthy Kids Club. And we'll be presenting as well there. We have two, we're hopefully going to be able to do a little essay contest where we select two students that will actually talk about what they think about our garden and kind of the recycling at our school and whatnot. So hopefully you guys can attend that fun. It's open to the public, fun event. And then finally, I just wanted to touch upon something um, that's been really eye-opening to us at school, at our school community, and that is um, we conducted two waste audits. We had fourth graders in Maestra Leva's class, and she's still here, um, actually put on aprons and plastic gloves and dig through our garbage. And we found out a lot of really, really interesting facts. So I'd love to share this. You could dissect our infographic that we, we created. But what we found out was that the majority of the waste that we're throwing into the garbage is food waste. And we actually met with Salinas Valley Waste Authority and um, had them help us analyze it. And um, they recommended that we should divert our food into a compost, a commercial compost. And we actually reached out um, to the commercial composting company to find out what the cost would be. And if we reduce that, we can reduce our garbage bill and we can re eliminate at least one day of garbage pickup and, and add a compost and it would actually save our school money. So hopefully we can talk about that later and make that happen for this year and um, into next year. So let's see. So this is just some pictures from that um, nice uh, waste audit that the kids did. Uh, you can see they really got their hands dirty. And uh, the last thing I just wanted to finish off is saying is that we, we are working really diligently on getting grants and donations from our um, from every source that we possibly can. So these are just some of the grants that we procured um, and some of the donations, and we are applying for more. So we just uh, recently applied for the Pebble Beach Company um, Foundation. We are in the process of, we actually applied for Jamba Juice as well that we'll find out on Earth Day if we receive that. And then um, it, we've got several, in the works and the Wally Waste Knot, if you've heard of that as well, we qualified for that, and all we have to do is submit our documentation, and that's a thousand dollar award as well. So, lots of great things that are happening at Lincoln and through our Healthy Kids Club. And again, as I said before, we absolutely could not do it without the partnership with the district. So, we appreciate everything that you do to support us and our administrator for being so supportive of our crazy ideas and our busy, busy schedule. And uh, last but certainly not least, our teachers. Our teachers have been really welcoming to all of this, and I know it's been a lot for them on their plate, and they've truly been amazing. So thank you guys very much for all your support. California English Language Development Test taken in the fall of 2014 and the resulting um, scores on um, the annual measurable achievement objectives um, for this course. This is just a quick graph showing our demographics for this school year and all of the data being shared is from the CalPads um, data in October of 2014. 
So 28% of our students at Laurelwood in October were English learners. These are the results of those students who took the um, English language de development test. There are five levels on the test, beginning, early, intermediate, intermediate, early, advanced, and advanced across the top, and then grade levels along the side. The total number of English learner students who took the test is in the bright blue column. <clears throat> and then the levels that those sco students scored um, goes across. So you'll see that when you get into second and third grade, the majority of our students are intermediate, early, advanced. We have a um, pretty even amount in the, the lower three levels in kindergarten coming in. And then some of the, we have fewer and fewer students as we go on into the upper grades because they are becoming redesignated like the um, 18 students that we are this evening. So we want eventually our numbers to go down so that as students start as English learners, they become reclassified and they no longer take the test when they're in the upper grades. So that's the goal. A little bit more information on our student demographics. So 193 students at one point were English language learners of our current students. Most of those, almost all of those, are Spanish speakers. The list of other languages there. <clears throat> of those 193, 38 were classified, uh, reclassified as fluent. The, the remaining are con continue to be English language learners. And then we have the levels at each. This is the bottom two, or the, the second from the bottom um, bullet there, um, is combined of all grade levels. This is taken directly from ORS, um, the um, data um, system that our um, district uses. It's a little bit hard to see some of the numbers. Basically, what you're looking at is um, growth. So the goal is for students to move up a level every year, an overall level. And so any of the students that are in the green have done that. This is comparing the same students over a two-year period. So it's their 2013 score compared to their 2014 score. If they did not go up a level or they went down a level, they're in red. If they went up a level, they're in green. So 71 students gained at least one level. 40 of those gained two or more levels. 39 students remained the same. They would be reflected in the red there. And then 14 students regressed. They actually went down a level. The greatest difficulty is in moving students from early, intermediate, or intermediate to early, advanced, or advanced. <coughs> it's not as difficult to move students from beginning to early, intermediate. Um, but once you start getting closer to intermediate, that's where um, it really takes a big push to get them to becoming proficient. Mm -hmm. So we have some goals to meet for the federal government. The first one is um, a growth goal. And so the goal is that um, 60.9, I think it says there, in bold in the second paragraph, um, 60 um, plus percent of our students are expected, um, in order to meet this goal, to move up a level um, in the two years that are being compared. Um, at our school, 57.3%. Um, um, moved up a level, so we did not meet that goal. The next goal is a certain percentage of our students need to be considered um, proficient in English. And those students are broken down into two categories. One category is for students who have been in um, a U.S. school for, five, for less than five years. Um, and that goal um, is 24.2%. Our result was 24.0%, just missed that goal. The other goal is for students who are in the school five or in a California or U.S. school five years or more. That goal was also not met. That goal um, is 50, 50 something percent, and ours was 39.1. So we've got some work to do. Um, there are some successes. Many of the students are moving up a level every year. Um, not as many as we would like to, but there is still a significant number that is making the growth that we would want. And I've listed some of the things that over the years has contributed to that success. Um, daily ELD instruction in the lower grades, 
um, implementation of GLAD strategies, which is a way to, to make sure that um, our students throughout the day are having their English uh, needs met um, in the curriculum. Intervention for students during the school day who have fallen behind in English language arts. After school intervention for kids who are not as low but still need a boost. Um, <clears throat> After school or Saturday acceleration program for EL students has been something offered. And then um, parent trainings have been offered as well. These are all things that have been offered throughout the years. Um, I added a um, section at the bottom for additional strategies that we need to implement in order to increase our success and meet those goals in the future. And that would be something that the whole state is looking at. There's an ELD, English Language Development, and ELA framework that was published last year. and. Um, we're beginning to do um, across the state some professional development so that teachers can see um, how English language development and English language arts um, integrate together and find a way to um, support students throughout the day in their instruction and also have a portion of the day that really gives them the specific skills they need in English in order to be successful the rest of the day. Any questions? Do we have any questions? <laughs> Members of the board, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think you're going to get any questions right now. Other than okay. mine. Thank you. you have one? Mine. Oh, just now? Uh, on staff development on your site, mm -hmm. um, how often is it offered at the internal level, at the local level? And are parents involved in that process? Um, staff development for ELD instruction or yes. just in general? Yes. Um, there hasn't been any specific staff development or professional development on site offered for teachers. That is something that I'm looking to offer some of our teachers in June and into next year. There are um, trainings being offered at the county level. I attended um, three days of training on the ELD ELA framework and wanted to see that for myself before rolling it out to the staff. So that's something that specifically will help teachers be able to develop lessons that um, focus on integrated and designated ELD, a way to make sure we're teaching throughout the day and also focusing in on the specific needs in a certain part of the day. So it's, it's being planned. That's good. Thank you very And much. all of this information is shared with our school site council and our EAC as well to get their input on what they would like to see happen. Let me tell you, your uh, ELAC members have been doing a good job, too. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the board? Thank you very much.